Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how different technologies helped us understand evolution better. So for example, DNA hybridization or amino acid sequencing or radioisotope dating, how those types of technologies allowed us to understand um, evolution better. In this video, we're going to cover the next dot point, which says, explain how Darwin and Wallace's theory of evolution by natural selection and isolation accounts for divergent evolution and convergent evolution. Right, so what I'll go first, what I'll go over first is again what that natural selection, what that was. And those names, Darwin and Wallace, you should know them, but I'm not going to go over them in this video. I'm actually going to cover them in the next video. But um, so natural selection, what natural selection was, there's four main sort of points to natural selection that you need to know. First was that there are variations that exist within members of a species. So what that means is that not all members of a species, so for example, the, the species might be the human, and members of a species are all of us, all the other human beings, how there's variation, so how not all humans look alike. We're all a bit different, right? So some might have darker skin, some might have lighter skin, some might have brown eyes, blue eyes, not purple, <laughs> purple eyes, um, green eyes, and um, others have different shaped ears or noses, there's always a bit of variation within any species, right? So that's the first point. And the second point is in every generation, there are members that are less well adapted to the environment. So some of these members have variations, differences that are not that good to, to survive in its environment. So what I have here, I've got a picture and you can see in this picture, you can see strange looking things which are actually meant to be bugs. So these are meant to be bugs. So bugs. And you can imagine they are, this is in some kind of crazy world where you have bugs which are all different colors, right? So you've got purple bugs, black bugs, green bugs, orange bugs, pink bugs. And at the moment, they're all quite peaceful. They're all living together and they're all, their variations don't matter because there's no real predator that has any, that kills them, right? But now what we would do is we'll add a bird. Again, um, I apologize for my drawing. I am not the best artist. This is supposed to be a bird here. And this bird, how birds hunt? Birds hunt with a really good eyesight. So like, you know how the hawks have that really good eyesight? So what this bird does, it's gonna be able to pinpoint these bugs, even though they're very small, and it's gonna be able to eat them. But if you think about these different variations, which ones would be the ones which would be eaten first? Well, probably the black one would be dead pretty fast. It's pretty easy to see in that green background. Then you probably get to the purple one, which is also quite obvious, the orange one, the pink one. Um, yeah, the white one is also pretty obvious, that gray one. Then you go for that yellow one, and then you go for that blue and that gray one. So now you only have two left. You've got that dark green and that really light green one, which you can barely see. But there's this hawk. He still has good eyesight. He can still get this green one and kill it. So now we have, in every generation, there are members that are less well adapted to the environment. So in this case, because the environment changed with that new predator, this guy came in. All of the other ones, which were not that well camouflaged, so this one's really well, you can barely see him, so well camouflaged. So I'm going to say, um, write camo, because I don't actually know, I kind of forgot how to spell camouflage. Um, so these, this guy is really well camouflaged, and the bird can't see him. So he's the one who's best adapted to this environment. So those two points are first two points of natural selection. Third one is those that survive have favorable variations and survivors have offspring and multiply in numbers. So as I mentioned earlier, these two, like now I'm just imagine there's actually two, not just one. So I need to have that for my next example, but there's two and they're so green, so like light green that you can barely see them. So that is a favorable adaption that they're so light green. But the good thing is now they can have, actually have bug love because they can make more babies, so they can make more offspring, because they're the only survivors. So what's gonna happen is all these other ones that come, little baby bugs, due to his offspring making, are all gonna be green as well, right? So basically have this favorable trait, which was in this case, was that greenish, that really light green, because it camouflages it. That favorable trait was now in more and more of the bugs, because these bugs had babies, and all the bugs, new bugs are also green, right? So. That's kind of how natural selection works. Um, you, have favor you have variation that exists in all members of species. There are always gonna be some variations that are better adapted. So for example, 
Um, if you imagine a couple of thousand years ago in Australia, if you had light skin, you would be in trouble because we didn't have sunscreen, we didn't have houses for shelter, so the, the sun would have killed you for skin cancer. Um, whereas nowadays we have more protection, which means we can survive in Australia even with lighter skin. But a couple of thousand years ago, that wasn't the case. And if you look at the skin of most Aborigines, it's darker because that's good protection, that's a good variation to protect you against the sun. Whereas if you have paler skin, the chance of surviving that would be less. Right? So darker skin is a favorable adaption in Australia to survive, whereas nowadays that's not that problem anymore because we have uh, different ways of getting around the sun it itself. Right? So that was natural selection. The environment kind of selects the ones which are best adapted to the environment. Those have offspring and they kind of dominate eventually. We need to talk about convergent and divergent evolution. So what's convergent evolution? So you can, ima you can ima imagine this picture here. I'm going to explain it as well. So different species in an area that share similar selective pressures also share similar features. Um, I'm going to explain that in a second. But the selective pressure here, so selective pressure, is something that is um, kind of dangerous or, or the, the thing that kills it, or the thing that you know, maybe lack of food or the predator. That's the selective pressure. So in this case, we have that same grass. We've got the bugs here, and we've got grasshoppers here. And the selective pressure is the bird, right? Because it wants to eat both the bugs and the grasshopper. Yeah, and these are meant to be the bugs. And again, I apologize for my drawing, but these are meant to be the grasshoppers. I don't know why I drew them like little marshmen, but um, these are the grasshoppers. And what you can imagine is this bird will, again, it has its hawk eyes, so it's going to pinpoint the ones it can see the best, and it's going to kill this one. And this grasshopper, this grasshopper and this bug, because they are purple, and purple is really easy to see in a green background. Whereas these other ones survive because they're more camouflaged. Now, you might say the bug and the grasshopper must be very similar in terms of their relationships, their ancestry, because they're both green. But that doesn't have to be the case because they're both green, because the, the, the um, bird just killed off the, all the other ones. So even though they're both green, it doesn't have to mean that they share very similar ancestry, right? It just might mean that the selective pressures for these two are the same, which means that you have similar adaptions. In this case, you have the adaptions of being very green to be good, well camouflaged. Now, just a more real example, I use the shark and the dolphin. Um, the shark is a fish, belongs to the fish category of fish, and the dolphin is a mammal. Now, if you look at a dolphin, a dolphin is actually much closer related to us humans than to a shark. But just looking at it, you'd be surprised because a dolphin doesn't look like a human. Um, but you can imagine a shark and a dolphin, they have the same selective pressures. So I'm going to write that in, not in green because you can't read that, but in red. Same selective pressures. So they have to survive the same kind of aquatic environment, all that water. And if a dolphin were to look like a human, like we wouldn't be able to swim in a, in a pool of ocean for too long. We would die quite quickly. So obviously they need to look more like a shark because a shark is well adapted to the environment. So they have that, you know, that streamlined body here, both of them. They have those fins that help them to swim, both of them. And they have that top fin as well. And just a boy, everything's quite similar. And the reason why is because of convergent evolution. Convergence, convergence comes from that word converge and that kind of means coming together so you have coming together you have different different species who are quite far in terms of their relationship genetic relationship come together in terms of their adaptions they have how they actually look like and what they do just because they have the same kind of selective pressures and to be able to survive those selective pressures only the ones who are best fit to the environment survive that's how you have a fish and a mammal looking very similar. And then we also have divergent evolution. So divergent, conversion was coming together and diversion was going apart. And what you can imagine here, we have um, bugs here. These are both, both bugs. So they're both the same species at the moment. It's just all bugs. These are all the same bugs. But yeah, they have some variations. So some are a bit greener and maybe um, these have fatter body. And then these, these have a slim body, but these guys have long legs compared to the other guys. They have shorter legs. But what you can imagine, it's going to be like a massive earthquake, some crazy earthquake, which rips a hole, like this massive hole in the middle. 
And what that means is now they're isolated. So these green, even though they're still the same species, they can't mix anymore with the other ones. So here that's your area. Because we had a massive earthquake and they're all really sad because they're um, far apart from each other now. So a barrier, and that now you can imagine that's kind of the isolation. So these are by themselves. And what's going to happen is these two bugs are going to have babies. And they're going to produce babies which are, have a fat body and short legs. Whereas the other ones are going to have babies which have slim body and long legs. And eventually, you're going to have to go from one species because they're going to be apart. And the longer they're apart, the more chances that they become a different species. So now we have the same species, but then there are different species of bugs. So species one of bugs here and species two of bugs here. Now they're different bugs because they spend so, far, so much time apart. And they were interbreeding amongst each other, but not between each other. Now they're different, different species of bugs. And the example I use, the real example, is the finch. So finch is what actually Darwin himself saw as finch, and that was one of the reasons why he started to believe in evolution. Is um, he, he went to the Galapagos Islands? That word Galapagos might be good to remember. I'll write it down: Galapagos Islands. And what he saw is this one was the most common of all the finches, a seed-eating finch. That's the mainland finch. So this one was that. He, this finch was here, all over this place. But what happened is. The bird actually left. Some some of the birds left, and they went to these, all these other islands. Right, so they went to these islands. And what happened over time is the beak and the body of the seed-eating finch was best adapted to eating seeds. But then each island had a different type of environment. So you might have had on the one island more insects, on the other island more fruits, on the other island more grubs. And then the last island, more leaves. And all of these birds went there, but only the ones who were best adapted to its environment survived. So now we had, after a while, after millions of years, not just a couple of days, millions of years, we had them changing. So we have more than one species now. We have an insect eating finch, which is this one here, the insect. So there might have been many insects here. So these are best adapted to eating insects. Then we have a leaf eating finch. So this one was right here. Again, its beak and its body best adapted to eating leaves. So the leaf here. We have the grub one, which is right here. Again, it's best adapted to smaller beak, smaller body to eat grubs. And it was right here. Because there might have been more grubs on that island. And also the seeds or actually the, this fruit one here, the fruit. Again, it has its beak best adapted to eat fruits and it's here. So what happened is this one type of finch left but after a while because they were all on their separate islands and each island had its different environment you had new species of finch come and now when we go to Galapagos we have lots of different types of species of finch each suited best to its small island that it occupies right? so I'll go over quickly again natural selection was just variate so there's four parts variation exists within members of species in every generation there are members that are less well adapted to the environment so these boys were, these bugs were not well adapted and they got killed off, but there is a variation, so they have different colors. Those that survive have favorable variations. So the ones that survived were the ones who, which were really well camouflaged and they just, yeah, they reproduced as well. So they survived and they could have offspring. They could reproduce. Offspring means having babies or children. And then you had, after a while, you had only these green bugs. Now we have conversion evolution. Conversion was when they converged. So when two different types of species become very similar in how they look. And the reason why is because they have these same selective pressures. So for example, how you have that bird who can pick up all the ones which are not that green, or how you have a very watery environment, which means that ones which are, have a streamlined body and fins are the ones that survive. So you've got the sharks and your dolphins. Um, and then we've got divergent evolution, which means that they're going apart. So we, might, we have the example if you had a maybe earthquake, which is a barrier between two different sets. Before, and they were the same species. There was, there was some variation within the species, but they were the same species. But then they, they verged. They were apart for so long that they became species one and species two, so different species. And then the real life example, we used the finches. So we had that mainland finch, which left some of them left the mainland. And after a while, each island had its unique finches because they be, only the ones who were best adapted to the environment survived, and each environment had its own perfect 
um, environment for that certain finch. So I hope that was useful.